So I started my game development journey in a pretty unusual way. I think most people start making games because they have a bunch of ideas for a game that they'd like to make, or ideas on how to improve one they're already playing. I mean, it's pretty tempting to sit down with the game and think, I can do this better. However, I was completely opposite. I'd never thought about game design or anything like that. I just liked making stuff and thought game development looked fun. So I jumped right from sandbox games into modeling, coding, and all that good stuff. But as time has passed and I started making my own games, I've realized just how important game design really is. So no matter if you're like me and have been making games for a long time, or if you're just starting out, I think these basic tips on game design are really good to know. But first, this video is sponsored by Dennis Panjuda. Dennis is an awesome game dev to do who's just launched a new course on Udemy, the complete C Sharp masterclass. This course will make you super comfortable writing code in C Sharp and using it for programming your own games in Unity. It will give you knowledge on many different aspects of C Sharp and teach topics such as databases, Lincoln WPF, and much more. At the end of the course, you will even have made three games on your own. If this sounds like something you're interested in, simply click the link in the description to get started and get a massive discount. So often when making a game, you start by setting a goal that the player has to achieve. But how to get the player from the beginning of the game and towards that goal, and most importantly how to get the player to enjoy this journey, is where the tricky and also fun part comes into play. Now, when it comes to game design, it's very hard to define rules and guidelines that apply to all games, simply because games are so different. Design choices that work for a MMO, RPG might not work at all for a competitive FPS. And now comes a very important point. Everything in game design must fit the player's intended experience. First off, every game needs a foundation. And in game design, there are three main pillars that hold up this foundation. Player, communication, and appeal. Now these might seem obvious, but understanding how to work with them is crucial. Really, you can start by asking yourself, what is the player's role? And how does he interact with the game? The player always needs to have a purpose, and it's extremely important that it's the player driving the game forward. After all, this is what distinguishes a game from a movie. If the player does not have a say and effect on the game, he becomes an indifference, simply completing tasks for the sake of it. Now just as important as giving the player purpose is communicating this purpose to the player. Without any idea of what the goal is and how to achieve it, the player will quickly start to feel powerless and become bored. So try to use the environment or leave visual clues that communicate the objective of a situation. I've talked about this before, but I think one of the most elegant examples of communicating purpose to the player is the beginning of Half-Life 2. Here the developers do an amazing job of showing a world of oppression and making the player feel part of that world, making him want to change it. Of course, none of this actually matters without appeal, which is why it's the most important pillar in the foundation. If the game doesn't appeal to the player, then what's the point? And for me, this is the hardest thing to consistently achieve, because it's solely based on a feeling of being drawn to the game and of wanting to play more. And I think this can greatly vary depending on the game, and even depending on the individual player. For some, the appeal is action-paced realism, with stunning graphics and heart-throbbing sound design. For others, Others, the appeal lies in an interesting story or a well thought out puzzle. And rather than try to make impossible claims as to how to make your game appealing, I think this is a good place to stress just how important it is to start every game with a prototype, to test out your ideas in a simplified format to see if the appeal is there. Of course, if your entire game idea is based around stunning graphics and huge open world levels, a simple prototype won't help you out much. But if that's what you're going for, you should already have these principles under your skin, along with 200 employees, of course. So with that, you've now established the foundation of your game. But there's of course still a bunch of design choices you have to make. For example, just like it's important to always communicate the player's purpose, it's just as important to always guide to the main focus. In other words, you need to clarify what the player should concentrate on. Of course, not all games lead the player straight from beginning to end. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. For these so-called non-linear games, it's just as important that you leave the player with alternate choices, like going on a little side quest detour from the main storyline. And when it comes to guiding the player through the game, something I've realized is the importance of anticipation. If used correctly, anticipation will help prepare the player for what's coming. This could be as simple as adding a charge-up animation to your enemies, allowing the player to react accordingly and not feel cheated by the game. Take for example the ending scene of Half-Life. Notice how sound builds up, electrical sparks start flying and the camera starts shaking right before the explosion. And actually, the whole sequence with G-Man talking to Dr. Freeman can be seen as one long build-up and therefore anticipation to the explosion and end of the game. 
Another aspect that has the tendency to get overlooked, since some might consider it obvious, is that the events in your game have to behave in a logical way, along with living up to the player's subconscious expectations of the game. A system design example of this could be when shooting something, bullet holes should appear, otherwise it won't live up to the player's expectations. Obtaining the right sounds of the physical events is also very important. The more sound is considered, the better experience for the player. The events occurring in your game should also follow general physics. Of course, some games change the rules of physics, but they do so consistently. And that's pretty much all this comes down to. Rules are rules. So once these rules have been established for a game, stick to them. However, remember that games can cheat as long as the player doesn't notice. A good example of this is the AI in the Arkham games. These AIs are told not to turn around when Batman sneaks behind them, so it allows the player to ambush them. In general, a lot of shooters will alter their AI to give the player some sort of hidden advantage that rewards a certain playstyle. Also, it's generally good not to make them too sophisticated, just in case they feel like turning on the human race. Now, another important point is that dynamic is lost when only one change occurs at a time. For me, this is what makes competitive games like Counter-Strike interesting to play again and again, even though you're always playing with the same weapons and on the same maps. For example, in order for the attacking team to successfully plan the bar, can we say, can we say that without getting demonetized? Uh... So in order for the attacking team to successfully plant the pineapple, many things need to happen at the same time. One guy might throw a smoke over the wall to cover off defending players, another might start sneaking around to flank, while the rest of the team charges in, each checking different angles in order to make sure everything is clear while the pineapple gets planted. And just as important as having enough happening in your game, it's good to establish a natural sense of progression. This means trying not to overstimulate or understimulate the player. To achieve this, it's important to think about how you lay out different events in your game. One way you can do this is by spreading out the moments of high concentration, vary between action-packed and more laid-back sequences, and keep the number of changes happening according to the current pace of the situation. I think the perfect example of this is the tower defense genre. Here gameplay is spaced out naturally by alternating between waves of enemies and building new towers. And on top of that, many games will vary between large waves of weak enemies and small waves of strong enemies. But spacing is not something that only applies to gameplay. It's equally important when talking about environment. Creating areas for the player to admire the graphics and expansive view and creating tighter areas to obtain a more claustrophobic feel changes the pace of the game. And this in turn affects gameplay. It's very important that you're aware of how much space you have in game and on screen to make sure you have the right amount of space for different scenarios. This is also important if your game has AI or other players since they should be given the right amount of space so they can move around in a realistic way. In fact, if you want to get really nerdy about how you can shape your environments to help guide your player, check out this amazing paper on structural composition patterns in 3D adventure games. There'll be a link in the description. So if you take all these things into consideration, you should be one step closer to designing your own game. Keep in mind though, everything I've mentioned here is only guidelines. And guidelines are only there to steer our creativity in the right direction. The rest is up to you. On that note, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in September, and a special thanks to Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Simmer IO, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Faisal Marify, Fang Su Long, Leo Lasset, Clinton Van Skua, Swears D, Derek Heemskirk, Ronan, Tima Folderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Uwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Bernier, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Corey Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock.